Welcome to this week's Archaeological News. Actually, my last proper news video was a month ago, not a week ago, because there were other topics that I wanted to concentrate on between then and now. So this week, I found lots of amazing stories I needed to catch up on. I selected a few of my favorite ones for this episode. Once again, I'm looking into ancient Mesoamerican astronomy. New research on it just keeps on coming up. I'm also discussing a bog body discovered in Denmark, which as such remains often do, show signs of ritual human sacrifice. I'm looking at the fantastic Avebury digitization project and the discovery of both a Bronze Age mound in the UK and a Bronze Age wishing well in Germany. Mesoamerican astronomy goes back earlier than previously thought. The Mayans are known to have used a 260-day calendar, with evidence for it coming from texts and the alignment of ceremonial buildings. However, a new paper in the journal Science Advances pushes the use of this calendar back by hundreds of years. Up until now, the earliest evidence for the 260-day calendar was from a sign depicted in late formative mural paintings at the site of San Bartolo, which date to between 300 and 200 BCE. However, experts have long suspected that the Mayan calendar had evolved much earlier under the Olmec culture, perhaps even as far back as 1400 BCE. Recent LIDAR research of Olmec and Maya sites has discovered 33,935 architectural and mound complexes, 478 of which date to the formative period, also known as the pre-classic era. Researchers characterized these 478 complexes into four different types. The middle formative Usumacinta, or MFU, the Veracruz ceremonial, or VC, the middle formative Chiapas, or MFC, and the middle formative Gulf, or MFG. An MFU has a rectangular layout and comprises an E-group, which includes a pyramid in the west, a platform in the east, and a plaza in the center. The largest MFU site was Aquada Phoenix, which was also the oldest, with a large part of it dating to between 1100 and 750 BCE. Some of these sites also have 20 edge platforms, which probably correspond with the base unit of the calendar. MFC complexes are similar to MFUs, but with less of a rectangular form and taller pyramids and mounds. Those identified in the LIDAR study date to between 800 and 400 BCE. VC complexes are not wildly different from MFUs, but have long linear mounds along their edges. They date to the same time period as MFUs. MFG complexes are a subtype of MFC sites and also date to between 800 and 400 BCE. The famous Olmec site of La Venta falls into this latter category. Numerous sites dating to the late classic period with different types of layouts were also identified. The authors of the paper were able to work out the orientations of 415 complexes dating to both the formative and the classic periods. They divided these orientations into five groups, all of which reflected the 260-day calendar. For example, the measurements in group one showed alignments with the sun rises on the 11th of February and the 29th of October. These two dates are separated by 260 days. The researchers also noticed that many complexes had been renovated multiple times, but had maintained original orientations during each period of reconstruction. This is something that would have been important if the orientations reflected the calendar that was used to plan agriculture and rituals throughout the year. So the paper concludes that the data does provide evidence for an early origin of the 260-day calendar amongst the Olmec culture. Evidence of ritual sacrifice found on newly excavated bog body. Archaeologists investigating a development site near Copenhagen have found the remains of a skeleton which may date back more than 5,000 years, alongside a flint axe and animal bones. The skeleton was found in a bog 
So archaeologists think they might have stumbled upon a case of ritual human sacrifice. Bog bodies have been found in many locations, from Ireland to Germany. Dating back thousands of years, these bog bodies were deposited as part of sacrifice rituals with ceremonial objects and animals. Due to the anaerobic conditions of the bogs, they are usually well preserved. The initial excavation was carried out by ROMU, who are in charge of cultural sites across Zealand. Since previous bog bodies had been found in the area, they knew there was a possibility another might surface. A complete excavation is due to be carried out in the spring, and researchers hope to extract DNA for further research. Experts aren't sure why ritual human sacrifice was carried out in these bogs during the Neolithic. Since the bogs were a mix of land and water, it's possible the ancients saw them as liminal spaces and a gateway to the gods. They were certainly crucial to survival, with bogs providing fuel and moss, as well as being used as hunting grounds. Public digital archive about the megalithic monuments of Avebury to be created. Dr. Colleen Morgan from the University of York's Department of Archaeology, in collaboration with a team from the National Trust at the Archaeology Data Service and Bournemouth University, is creating a digital archive of documents related to the megalithic monuments of Avebury. The archive will be publicly accessible and detail all the archaeological discoveries made at the famous Wiltshire site, including pre-war excavations. Supported by Historic England and English Heritage, it's hoped that this digital archive project called the Avebury Papers will make it easier to manage heritage sites and create educational programs and planned tourism activities around them. Bronze Age burial mound discovered in Northampton. A Bronze Age burial mound, as well as a Roman shrine, have been discovered by archaeologists in Northampton. The dig also uncovered a 2,000-year-old leather shoe, ancient pine cones and walnut shells. A nearby spring is likely to have held ritual importance during both the Bronze Age and the Roman period, inspiring funerary and religious monuments to be built close to it. The excavation was carried out by the Museum of London Archaeology because of a housing development due to be built on the site. No human remains were found in the Bronze Age barrow, only five empty urns. This might indicate that the site was used symbolically rather than for actual burials. The Roman building has an unusual layout with an underground room and had painted plaster on its walls. Experts think it was a shrine where votive offerings were made, although no objects related to such an activity have been found. Archaeologists also found water tanks, which suggest the spring water was collected for agricultural activities as well. Bronze Age wishing well found in Bavaria, Germany. Archaeologists have discovered a 3,000-year-old wooden wishing well containing more than 100 artefacts in the Bavarian town of Germering. During the Bronze Age, the well was used for ritual deposits of decorative clay vessels, robe pins, amber beads, and metal spirals. A bracelet, a mounted animal tooth, and a wooden scoop were also found. It's very unusual for a Bronze Age well to survive in such a good state of preservation. Conditions created by groundwater kept the wooden sides of the well and the artefacts moist, which contributed to their survival. Experts think the artefacts were carefully lowered into the well during cult rituals, which explains why they didn't break. It's likely these rituals were centered around imploring deities for a good harvest. The wishing well was discovered as part of an ongoing excavation required before the construction of a distribution center on the site. Archaeologists have discovered 13,500 artifacts dating to both the Bronze Age and the early Middle Ages in the area. The artifacts from the wishing well are currently being further examined by the Bavarian State Office for Monument Conservation and will eventually be moved to the Gemering City Museum of Science. That's it. So, the fact that the 260 year calendar goes back much further in the ancient Mesoamerican timeline than previously known is not a surprise. As you will know from my other videos, there's evidence that in different parts of the world, months, seasons, and years were tracked as far back as the Paleolithic, right through the Mesolithic, and during the Neolithic. In the Paleolithic, it appears to have been tracked via cave art, in the Mesolithic with timber posts, and during the Neolithic via the alignments of megalithic monuments. 
Tracking the year would have served an immensely practical function, helping the ancients to hunt or farm effectively, depending on the time period we're talking about. From the Neolithic onwards, there's a lot of evidence that rituals took place during these astronomical observations. Considering their importance to survival, this makes sense, since the ancients may not have seen the annual cycles as inevitable occurrences, but as something that was influenced by deities. The bog bodies are interesting, if a little gruesome. I haven't read much on this ancient practice, but the excellent preservation of the remains does provide a lot of evidence as to what took place, even though it doesn't explain why. I'll be reading up a little bit more on that, might do a whole video on it. The story about the Bronze Age mound and Roman shrine is just another reminder that in ancient times, springs were really important ritual sites, which, like many religious spots in prehistory and history, were reused over and over again by subsequent cultures. Votive offerings have been found in springs and rivers dated to the Bronze Age as well as later periods. I've discussed examples from Etruscan sites as well. The Bronze Age wishing well found in Bavaria also falls into this category. What I find interesting about this particular story is that the votive offerings were placed carefully into the well. Often there are examples of them being purposefully broken instead. Overall, what we find in this week's stories is a common thread, actually. In ancient times, understanding the natural world was important for survival. People not only tracked its cycles, but they also carried out rituals and ceremonies that they thought could influence it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please hit the like button, share it with your friends who love prehistory as well. Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members, and I'll see you next time.